Hi guys, welcome back. We're going to be solving the May June 2024 O level and IGCSE economics MCQ paper that was held yesterday on the 6th of June. So let's get started. Question number one says, Why will scarcity always exist? So the correct answer for this is David, there are unlimited warrants, and obviously because wants will always be unlimited so the possibility of scarcity to always exist in the basic economic problem to always exist will be there question number two the student takes up a two-year apprenticeship for which she will earn ten thousand per year after that she expects twenty five thousand dollars per year she would take an unskilled job for sixteen thousand per year instead of the apprenticeship what is the opp opportunity cost in two years of completing the pro the whole program and so they're asking about the opportunity cost that is referring to the benefit of the next best alternative for gone and she has two options either she could join the apprenticeship program or she could you know leave it and you know take up a job if she joins your apprenticeship program she will earn ten thousand per year so in two years she would be making twenty thousand dollars and in two years if she works and not joins this program she would be uh, working as an unskilled worker in instead of this program and so she would be earning a total of thirty two thousand dollars and hence what it follows is that you know the opportunity cost in two years of completing the entire internship program is not the entire thirty two thousand dollars that she will be foregoing because she will be recovering some of it that is twenty thousand so the opportunity cost is the difference that is twelve thousand is the opportunity cost or the net benefit that is foregone by completing the apprenticeship program. Question number three says the diagram shows a production possibility curve which current combination of the capital and consumer goods would produce the greatest number of consumer goods in the future. Now the greatest number of consumer goods in the future would be made when the least number of consumer goods are produced right now and so what it follows is that if we focus our entire production our entire resource allocation on producing capital goods and produce zero consumer goods so it follows that we would be you know maximizing our capability and capacity to produce capital goods which would mean that in the future it would automatically result in more consumer goods being made because obviously it will increase the productive capacity of the economy and the ability because capital goods are mad those man-made goods that produce other goods such as consumer goods right so we would be end up so we would end up making more consumer goods in the future and so it follows that the correct answer is p and O P and O means that zero consumer goods are being made and the maximum possible capital goods are being made for this particular economy. Question number four says what is not a macroeconomic topic and so it follows that the correct answer is D for David the total output of the German car industry because GDP CPI and the level of unemployment we're talking about uh, you know we're talking about country wise unemployment we're talking about the general price level of the entire economy. We're talking about the total output of the entire economy while here we're talking about the total output of German car industry which is specific to a particular industry and hence it follows it is a micro topic and hence for the correct answer is D for David. The next question says what is likely to cause an extension in the demand for a firm's food, fruit drink and the correct answer should be B the reduction in the cost of producing drink because what this will do is that the reduction in the cost would basically shift your um, supply curve outwards to the right from S1 to S2 at a price of P1 creating an immediate surplus by the distance of AB at the same price and in order to eliminate this surplus the prices in the market for this particular firm's fruit drink would start to go down and when and when in order to restore the equilibrium at point C and when this happens basically what happens is that when the prices would start going down it would cause an extension in your demand curve right cause an extension in demand so that's the correct answer a reduction in the cost of producing the drink which will subsequently reduce prices creating an extension in the demand as well as a contraction in supply in order to restore the equilibrium but we just need to focus on the demand right now for this mcq and hence the correct answer is boy question number six says supermarkets sell petrol gas outside stores they reduce the price of the petrol below other suppliers in order to attract more customers to buy the goods in the store when they buy more petrol this is a smart marketing technique if this were successful how it might be shown on the diagram so what the supermarket guys are doing now is that this let's say this is your supermarket and they, what these guys are doing is that they started to sell this gas and petrol outside their stores and what what 
happens is that they try so what they will do is that they will ultimately aim to increase the supply of your petrol and when this would happen supply of petrol would go up the price of petrol would go down and when the price of petrol will go down people will start consuming more petrol but once they consume more petrol they would visit the store as well because that store is i mean that petrol is being sold right outside the stores so automatically people would start visit the stores and buy more goods from there so the demand for the stores would start going up and so what it follows is that um, what it follows is that you know how how are, is it how sort of how are we going to represent this on the demand and supply diagram the correct answer would be d for david um, this it would sh i mean basically your supply curve for petrol is shifting outwards to the right they have shown here and your demand curve for your stores goods would shift outwards to the right as well again because of a reduction in the price of petrol forcing the consumers to also enter the shops and purchase more goods from there so six the correct answer is david d Question number seven says, which statement describes a market in disequilibrium? And we know that a market is in disequilibrium or a disequilibrium would occur when there's an imbalance between the quantity demand and the quantity supplied at a given at any given price. And so for this, the correct answer should be option A because uh, excess demand results result results from you know a government maximum price that is below the equilibrium price because this is describing option is describing a situation where the government imposes a price ceiling that is a maximum price that can be charged for any good or service which is you know below the equilibrium price and what fo it follows is that at this partic particular maximum price right which is your um, price ceiling below the equilibrium it follows that your quantity supplied will be less than the quantity demanded and so this distance let's say um, a minus b would basically reflect your disequilibrium that is it would reflect your shortage because the quantity demanded exceeds the quantity supplied resulting in excess demand or a shortage and this is basically a classic example of a market in disequilibrium which is caused by price controls and that that's what make makes a the correct answer question number eight says in response to an increase in the price from five kg to six per kg a farmer increased supply because obviously as per the law of supply it would cause an extension along the supply curve and so as the price goes up from five to six dollars um you know you calculate the percentage change in price and then you divide it by sorry you, cal you calculate the percentage change in quantity supply and you divide it by the percentage change in your uh, price and that would give d the correct answer because the percentage change in your quantity supplied would be 500 minus 400 divided by the old quantity supplied which is 400 times your 100 this would give you a percentage change in quantity supplied divided by the percentage change in price that is from it's going up from five to six so this is your new price minus your old price so six minus five divided by five times hundred right so this and so it follows that the answer to this would be plus positive 1.25 right the next question says which government measure is most likely to cause a fall in both price and in quantity sold now Okay, so the price and the quantity sold both are decreasing and uh, the correct answer to this question is B and the reason is that if you impose a maximum price and we know that a maximum price is a price ceiling and which is basically a government imposed limit on how high a price can be charged for a product and it is set below the equilibrium price in order to make the essential goods and services more affordable to consumers right so if this is your equilibrium price p1 the government sets a maximum price let's say pm and so what that does is that basically um, reduces your quantity supplied and increases your quantity demanded and now the question is saying which is most likely to cause a fall in both the price so yes the price is going down because now the this particular good will be sold at pm not at p1 and we know that pm is less than p1 and it will also cause a reduction in the quantity being sold why because the amount that will be available in the market is going to fall since your supply is contracting so irrespective of whatever the demand is which is obviously higher than the supply but what will be sold will only be what is available in the market and so it follows that initially you, let's say q1 was being sold uh, because that was the equilibrium quantity that was being traded where demand equals supply but now your quantity sold will fall to q2 right so your quantity sold is decreasing over here as well your quantity sold is being decreasing over here as well and your price is going down as well and so it follows that b is the correct answer the next question says question 10 the diagram shows the wage rates of cleaners and nurses and basically so what is the result of if a national minimum wage of om is introduced so so for cleaners and nurses you have the respective 
labor market demand supply given for these two different professions and uh, the equilibrium wage rate is wc for cleaners while for nurses it is wn and you have a national minimum wage imposed for cleaners which is above the equilibrium wage rate and over here it is for nurses it is below the equilibrium wage rate and we know that minimum wages are a key policy tool for promoting fair wages so that you know incomes um, increase for the labor and the idea is to you know improve the living standards and reduce you know poverty and income inequality and so what it follows is that as the minimum wage is above the equilibrium for cleaners what will happen is that you know the labor market as per instructed by the law would pay a minimum wage of wm instead of qc instead of wc right and so for cleaners the you know the wage rate of cleaners would increase right and while for your nurses there would be no change in the wage rates for nurses because an equilibrium i mean your national minimum wage rate is below the equilibrium and so it would be ineffective because you're saying to the labor market that you know what pay the nurses a minimum of m while the equilibrium market wage rate is already wn which is more than the minimum wage rate so hence the market wage rate that is wn will prevail in this case rendering the minimum uh, you know national minimum wage rate ineffective for nurses um, right and so the correct answer would be d that a wage rate of cleaners will rise while the wage rate of nurses would have no change the next question question 11 says what would cause a decrease in the spending by households in a country and the correct answer would be a a fall in disposable income would obviously reduce your consumption that is it would decrease the spending by the households in a country so a is the correct answer all the other answer options are you know incorrect and this is a pretty easy mcq question number 12 says which combination shows the advantages of a small firm over a large firm okay now i've already marked the answer by the way it's c but let me tell you the reason as well because you see um as far as your better communication is concerned small firms will generally benefit from better communication due to fewer layers of management in a smaller workforce and there will also be greater independence because they have greater flexibility and they have more independence in their operations they're not bound by the you know bureaucratic structures that can slow down decision making as far as large organizations are concerned but they do not benefit from lower average cost because this is a typically feature of a large firm as the benefit large firms benefit from economies of scale producing at lower average cost but this is and small firms usually have their scale of operations are small so they don't benefit from lower average cost and economies of scale that makes see the correct answer question 13 again a very very simple question what is the variable cost of production for a firm the cost of raw material raw material the cost of raw material is a variable cost of production all of these are fixed cost again a very simple easy one mark the next question question 14 says the table shows daily average revenue and units uh sold sold uh, over a five day period what can be concluded okay so option a and b are showing about total highest total revenue so let's basically calculate total revenue total revenue uh is price times quantity but then you don't have price given you don't have con you do have quantity given so the average revenue is average revenue per unit so average revenue is basically and if you multiply average revenue with the number of units that you're selling you'll end up with total revenue so let's calculate total revenue for all the five days this would be 800 this should be 160 times 4 this should be 640 this should be 120 times 8 this should be 960 this should be 18 into 40 which is 1120 and 40 into 16 which is 640 and hence it follows that you know option b should be the correct answer the firm's highest total revenue occurs at 14 units of um you know 14 units of output sold that is 1120 dollars so b is the correct answer for question 14 Question number 15 says, which function of money acts as a measure of value? And so what it follows is that medium of exchange difference. So, 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 so basically, if you talk about unit of account, so here, when you talk about money acting as a unit of account, it means that, you know, money provides a consistent measure of value for goods and services, which obviously then makes it possible for us to compare the value of different items. And it also allows us that prices could be expressed in terms of money, enabling easy comparisons and the accounting of the, you know, uh, goods and services to be done. And, um, and hence the, I mean, the function of money that acts as a measure of value would be the unit of account because its function is allowing the prices to be set and being compared in monetary terms, simply facilitating the economic decision making and accounting. So 15 D for David. The next question, question 16 says, what are the features of a highly competitive market when compared with a monopoly market? So you have two features, price and profit, and they're asking us that what will happen? What are the features for a competitive rather than a monopoly market? And so what it 
we know that as far as the price is concerned in especially in a highly competitive market there would be numerous firms that will compete against each other which typically drives down the prices as compared to a monopoly market where a single firm controls and dominates the market and can, that allows the monopoly firms monopoly firm to potentially set prices higher um, because there are no close substitutes for its product and as far as the profit is concerned as far what it follows is that in a highly competitive market the firms um would be earning lower profits as compared to monopoly because you know in a highly competitive market firms would easily enter while the industry which will increase competition driving down prices while in a monopoly since a monopoly would impose barriers to entry and it would try to maintain its monopoly uh, dominant market position and so it will maintain its high profits in a monopoly market and so what it follows is that in a perfect in in a comp highly competitive market your prices will be lower and the profits will be lower as well as compared to a monopoly market so so the correct answer is d for david question number 17 says what is not a role of a central okay so it says what is not a role of central government in a mixed economy and so if you look at the you know uh, the first option it says providing demerit goods so demerit goods are those that are considered harmful to individuals uh, and society such as let's say tobacco alcohol and drugs and the government typically seeks to reduce the consumption of you know demerit goods through taxation regulation and you know public awareness programs rather than providing such good and hence it follows that we can say that you know a would be the correct answer because what is not a role obviously the government will not provide demerit goods in a mixed economy question number 18 says the government wishes to prevent deflation which combination of policies would be the most effective in achieving the same now we know that if the government wants to prevent deflation it definitely means that it is bad deflation or harmful deflation which arises in a recession um due to a recession um when your aggregate demand is going up causing cyclical unemployment to rise and your real output to fall national income to fall causing an economic contraction and hence it follows that the combination of policies that would be required would be your expansion in monetary and fiscal policy expansionary demand side policies basically and a reduction in interest rate is an expansionary monetary policy while an increase in government spending is an expansionary fiscal policy so the correct answer should be c for charlie reduce the interest rates and increase your government spending question number 19 says the diagram shows the impact of a tax introduced on a product which is obviously an indirect tax which is obviously introduced on a good increases the cost of the good reducing the supply and hence increasing prices which area represents the amount of tax paid by the consumer now let's first look at what is a tax paid so the tax paid would comprise of this vertical distance between the two supply curves which would represent a tax per unit times or multiplied by the quantity that is being sold your quantity that is being sold is oq and so it follows that you know um this distance um this vertical distance multiplied by this distance would give you an area which is equal into this box which is representing the total tax that is paid or as received by the government as tax revenue but they're asking you how much is paid by the consumer which is means that they're asking about the government's sorry the, the consumer's tax burden and so the consumer's share or the consumer's tax burden is this shaded region which is p1 p2 ef that is p1 p2 ef and so the correct option should be p1 p2 pf which is only in option d that is david question number 20 says which statement about supply side you know policy is correct now supply side policies are those policies that are designed to improve the productive capacity of an economy to the focus on increasing the quantity and the quality of factors of production to enhance the economy's potential gdp or potential output and hence it follows that a should be the correct answer it aims to increase the productive productive potential of an economy the next question question 21 says which change is most likely to cause faster economic growth in the short run okay now let's see the answer options and let's evaluate them so the first answer option is an increase in net emigration now net emigration basically means more people leaving the country than entering and this would basically reduce the labor force leading to a decrease in production capacity and potentially you know 
uh, slowing your um, economic growth and as far as b is concerned now b can actually cause an increase in economic growth this will contribute to but but the thing is this will contribute to long term economic growth by expanding the future labor force it does not have an immediate effect on the economic growth because infants do not enter the labor force for many years right while an increase in death rate will reduce your population and labor force negatively impacting economic growth in the short run and so we are left with option d so option d should be the correct answer but the thing is that increasing the retirement age means that individuals will remain in the labor force longer which will actually boost the available uh, you know labor supply um and uh, you know contributing to economic growth in the short run by either maintaining or increasing the workforce and hence d should be the correct answer the next question question 22 says how is the pattern of employment likely to change when a country becomes more developed so the first option says from rural employment to urban employment and um, if you talk about rural employment to urban employment we know that as your countries will basically develop right uh, so there would be usually a significant shift of employment from rural areas that are agricultural uh, based economies to urban areas uh, that represent industrially and you know service based economies basically so urbanization is a key feature of economic development because people move to cities we know that we people move to cities for better jobs or job opportunities and to improve the living standards and that is what makes a the correct answer that how is the pattern of employment likely to change when the country will become more developed so there would be um, you know from from rural employment to urban employment question number 23 says which item is least likely to be included in the cpi consumer price index and so the cpi is basically a measure that examines the weighted average of the prices of a basket of you know consumer goods and services such as you know your transportation food medical care and it is basically used to assess the price changes that are associated with the cost of living and if you look at the options let's say you know domestic cooking oil now this is a common consumer good that is typically purchased by households and hence would this would be included in your cpi as far as your uh, milk and personal mobile phones are concerned milk is a staple consumer good that is widely purchased by everyone by all the households uh, by all the average households you know and your personal mobile phones are also your consumer electronics right commonly purchased and would be included in the cpi while homemade clothes will not be included because they are not typically purchased as consumer goods but are made by individuals at home because cpi measures the cost of purchased goods and services homemade items will hence not be included and that's what make b the correct answer Question number twenty-four says the table shows statistics of four countries A, B, C, D. According to the data provided, which country has the lowest standard of living? So you have four countries A, B, C, D, and you have average years of schooling, life expectancy, and GDP per head given. And if you look at, uh, I mean, if you look at the average years of uh, schooling for option A, so. So if you see, if you assess this, if you assess these values, uh, country A has the lowest life expectancy, forty-five years, and the lowest average years of schooling, six years, and uh, you know, low GDP per head of two hundred dollars, which is indicating, which is indicative of poor education, poor health, and poor income levels, you know, of a country. And so, given these factors, country A has the lowest standard of living due to its low levels of education, life expectancy, and income. Right, guys. So, is the correct answer? Question number twenty-five says economic development in country X has progressed at a greater rate than in country Y. What is most likely explanation of this difference in economic development between country X and Y? Now, country X. It says country X has a higher spending on education, and obviously, you know, education is something that determines that has an impact on your economic development. and so this should be the correct answer because you see investment in education will typically lead to a more skilled and productive workforce which will drive and foster economic growth and development and better education will basically improve your human capital your innovation and productivity contributing significantly to the economic development of a nation and since they are talking about country x has progressed at a greater rate so definitely it makes a the correct answer because it says that country x then has a higher spending on education compared to country y and that gives a reason why country x is progressing at a greater rate in terms of economic devel for in terms of economic development ra rather than compared to basically country y right 
क्वेश्चन नंबर 26 सिक्स से इज अ राइज इन विच फैक्टर वुड कॉज एन इंक्रीज इन द पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ ऑफ अ कंट्री अ राइज बेसिकली सो दे आर सेइंग सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज वेरी सिंपल बिकॉज एन इंक्रीज इन द बर्थ रेट विल डायरेक्टली इंक्रीज द पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ रेट बिकॉज मोर इंडिविजुअल्स आर बिंग बॉर्न बिकॉज बेसिकली मोर इंडिविजुअल्स आर बिंग एडिड टू द पॉपुलेशन सो दैट वुड मेक ए द करेक्ट आंसर क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी सेवन से डायग्राम शोज अ मार्केट फॉर एन इम्पोर्टेड गुड विद एन इक्वलिब्रियम पॉइंट एट एक्स द कंट्री इम्पोज अ टैरिफ नाउ वट इज अ न्यू इक्वलिब्रियम सो दिस इज अ मार्केट फॉर एन इम्पोर्टेड गुड द डिमांड सप्लाई ऑफ एन इम्पोर्टेड गुड एंड दिस इज योर ओरिजिनल डिमांड कर वाइल दिस इज योर सप्लाई कर्व विद एन इक्वलिब्रियम एट एक्स एंड सो वी नो दैट टैरिफ इज अ टैक्स ऑन इम्पोर्टेड गुड्स विच विल अफेक्टिवली रेज द प्राइस ऑफ दीज गुड्स एंड सो वट विल हैपन इज दट यू सप्लाई कर्व आफ्टर द टैक्स वुड शिफ्ट अपवर्ड्स टू एस वन Uh, because it would increase the cost of the imported goods and as high and since because of a rise in cost it would reduce the supply of the imported goods and hence increase the market price um as well so the new equilibrium will be where the new supply curve s1 would intersect the original demand curve and following you know this logic the new equilibrium will definitely be at point b where demand equals to the new supply curve that is s1 so b is the correct answer the next question question number 28 says the diagram shows the market for chinese yuan priced in us dollars and um, so you ha- you have the price of yuan um the chinese yuan in terms of dollars on the vertical axis and the quantity of yuan on the horizontal axis and it says what could have caused the change in the demand for yuan um from d1 to d2 a decrease in fdi in china a decrease in the level of so the correct okay so basically a decrease in the foreign direct investment in china uh would lead to less demand for yuan because foreign investors would then need fewer yuan to invest in chinese assets and therefore this would cause the demand curve to shift from d1 to d2 making a the correct answer the next question question number 29 says the table shows the average exchange rate of pound to dollar it shows the amount of dollar that can be bought with 1 pound so in year 1 from 1 dollar you can buy 1.64 pounds and then year 2 1.52 pounds and so on and so forth and what we can clearly see on the table is that it is evident that the value of the pound is depreciating over the years and a depreciating currency would mean that the uk pound would buy fewer do- us dollars over time and if you look at and they are saying what is likely what is the likely effect of this change on the uk economy that if pound goes if you i mean uk pound goes down what how would this have so basically is the effect of currency depreciation so a depreciating currency will usually increase the cost of imported goods and services uh which can you know lead to higher inflation rather than a decrease in cost per inflation so a is not the correct answer because when because the Im- cost of imported raw materials might go up and if you have an inelastic demand for imports such as oil um, or essential key raw materials it will result in higher cost per inflation so cost per inflation should go up not go down while option b says a decrease in the current account deficit which makes sense because a depreci- depreciating currency would make exports cheaper and hence more artificially competitive in the foreign markets while imports will become more expensive and this tends to then improve the current account balance potentially reducing the current account deficit right so that is what makes b b should be the correct answer question number 30 says the table shows the components of japan's current account balance in trillion yen for two years so if year one and year two and then you have the balance on the current account given and what balances have improved so your balance of uh, you know goods is on in a deficit and your service is also in a deficit in year one this is in a surplus while the balance of secondary income is also in a deficit and so if you look at in year two the balance of goods and the balance of services has actually worsened the deficit has gone up right while the as far as the balance of primary income is concerned the surplus from 14.04 has gone down to 13.53 to 13.55 while the balance of the secondary income was in a deficit that was minus 1.11 deficit and that deficit has gone down from 1.11 to 1.02 which shows an improvement right and so what balances has improved between year 1 and year 2 it follows that the correct answer is c that is balance on secondary income C is the correct answer and that's it guys i'll be ending the video here i wish you all the very best for your upcoming results in august and until then take care